Pardon the Richter Eruption. I'm Jared Ware, and I now declare the 15 topics of the 2014 Winter Olympic Special PTR open. Pardon the Richter Eruption. I'm Dan Charest. Uh, it's good to be back, you know, a little special edition for us, for everyone, you know. A little, a little Winter Olympic Associate Edition. Did I pronounce that correct? Yeah, I think so. Associate. I think so. We're going to leave you hanging Dang. for the Winter Olympics. We recreated our sets here in frigid Sochi, Russia. It looks exactly like the Anchor <laughs> TV studio. That's how much, but that's how big our budget here is at Anchor TV. We can rebuild the studio in Sochi. But let's get right into this topic. Number one, we said we got 15. Tom's right. in the control room. Let's get number topic number one up on the board, and let's get right back into it. It's been a while. Let's see if we remember how to do this. I know, I know. I, I mumbled a few times during that first sequence. I didn't know what to do with myself. Topic number one. Dan, what's your favorite Winter Olympic moment? Well, we started with this topic in our World Renowned 2012 edition uh, of the Partner Director Eruption Olympic Special, but we're going to go Winter Olympic right now. Really only started watching it in 2002, the Salt Lake Games. Uh, wasn't as big into the Olympics then. That it sort of gave me my spirit. The Olympic spirit got into me during Salt Lake, but we're going to go back only to the last Olympiad, Vancouver. And I think you might have to agree with me on this one. United States versus Canada in the gold medal men's hockey game. Not females. I mean, they also face each other, the females. We might get into that later. Uh, but, yeah, the men's final last time. Just the two best teams, the two most well-known teams. It was in North America. It was in Vancouver. I mean, people claim that Canadians wouldn't know what to do with themselves if they lost that game. So I was really hoping the U.S., who beat Canada a week early in the preliminary round, was going to be able to take it. And plus, the game, the game, the buildup was great, and then the game delivered itself because the U.S. was down 2 nothing. Ryan Kessler scored in the second, 2-1, to one, and then Zach Parisi scored with, like, 25 seconds left, and then, unfortunately, Sid the Kid snuck it past Ryan Miller. But Ryan Miller got the MVP, so... What, not, as great, for, not as great as the gold medal, but... Yeah, a silver so nice. medal was a nice performance. Yeah, I'm going, when I first thought favorite moment, the first thing that popped in my head was, what was the first, what's the one moment that I think of the most when I think Winter Olympics? And the one that popped up to me the most, I remember watching this late night uh, in my room, back when I had a TV in my room, which lasted for like two weeks. Uh, Apollo Anton Ono winning the gold by getting cut off by South Korean skater Kim Dong Sung. I don't know wow. why I remember that. And it's one, I, that's when I think Winter Olympics, I think of that. Apollo Anton Ono was cool. But he hadn't won that gold medal. You wanted him to win because he could have been one of the faces of the Olympic Games if he did it. Then he ended up coming in second. Then, oh, you got to hold the phone because he, because Kim Dong Sung almost ran over Ono. Not really. There was barely <laughs> any contact. Yeah, uh, really wasn't that big of a deal. Probably not worth the violation, but it's in the rules. They called it. Ono won the gold. No one really, re well, people do remember that. But when you think of Paul Anton Ono, gold medals, you don't ever put an asterisk, asterisk yeah. there, even though. It definitely deserves it because he came in second. So that's the moment I think of the most. My favorite moment. I, I like where you're going with that because the South Korean American rivalry in short track speed yeah. skating, it's a very good one. I mean, and they, they but, hate, but it's really only South Korea versus Apollo Anton Ono because there's really no other yeah, they, tremendous they American really skater. They don't really like Apollo Anton Ono since then. They don't like him. It's hurt his image Isn't his in dad South Korean. Korean? It's, yes, his dad is Korean. His dad's Korean. And also in the 2002 World Cup when the U.S. played South Korea in South Korea, so when South Korea scored a goal, the whole team lines up behind the guy who scored it, and they pretend to be short track speed skaters. A little yep. knock at Anton Ono. Most American soccer fans probably didn't know what they were, what that was no. all about. But South Korean short track, it's quite the national pastime. It is intense. Very good sport. We'll we'll get into that yeah. later. All right, I think we got topic number two, Tom. Our warehouse. So we got the Parade of Nations, eighty-eight nations, a world record, Olympic record. Yeah. U.S. And has we'll a record. That. We'll get into some of those 88 countries. Yes, we will. That's towards the end of this uh, special edition episode. But we got 230 U.S. Olympians. A, a record. Another record. Yeah. You got to pick one to be your flag bearer. Where are you going with it? I'm going. I, I got a guy. Don't think it's going to happen. Good chance it's not going to happen. I'm going Shawnee Davis. First African American to win a gold medal for the United States in the Olympic Games. That's a big factor in it. A guy who's been successful in the Olympic Games dating back to Torino, so he's done it. He has the longevity. He has the goals. He has the records. You see him on a lot of commercials now, especially for the games. So he's one of the faces of the games. I'd go Shawnee Davis. He won't because uh, the ice skating or the speed skating federation, they have their issues between those two. So it won't happen because of that, but I think he deserves it. Yeah, they, they butt heads. And it'd be a yeah. nice way to maybe uh, – 
be on friendlier terms if Shawnee Davis did. I, I wouldn't have a problem with it, but I'm going to, with a guy, former gold medalist like your guy, and th this is his fifth Olympics, 31-year-old Nordic combined combined racer, uh, yeah, jumper racer, thing. Bill DeMong. He, uh, he's, this is his fifth Olympics now. First one was in Nagano as a 17-year-old. Now he's back for his fifth games in Sochi. That's the third time I've said fifth games. Yep. He's back. He won a silver medal. Nordic combined, by the way, in the United States. Eh, awful. Up until Vancouver. Johnny Spillane won three silver medals, two individual, and then one in the team event with DeMong. Spillane is not back. The other three guys are back, including uh, this guy up here, Todd Ludwig. That is the first part of Nordic combined ski jumping. And then Bill, Bill DeMong, he won the individual, uh, I believe it was the 15... K with the, with the normal hill. Normal hill? Ah. I get my Nordic combined mixed up. There's yeah. large hill and small hill, but you do the ski jumping first, and then we'll get into that later when, when we hit the big board. But Bill DeMong's my guy. So many times he's been in the Olympics, finally delivered. I think it's time to uh, show him some respect and let him carry the flag in to Olympic Stadium. I like it. I like it. I awesome. got no problem with awesome. that. Let's go to topic number three. Tom, let's get it. We did this one in the, for our summer preview. We're doing it again here in the winter. What's your can't-miss event 2014 games? All right, so when you think Winter Olympics in America, number one sport you think of is either skiing or hockey. Skiing is tough to get a can't-miss event, I think, because everyone goes separately. But here's an event that I promise will be the best of these games. Short track speed skating, 5,000-meter relay. You get five teams. On, I don't know if... If you're familiar with short track, it's the size of a hockey rink. Yeah. And you're zooming around that thing. Yep. You got you got the, the olive looking things on your fingers so you can grip the, the turns properly. You got pads up against the wall, thick pads, because a lot of people go crashing yeah. into those things. So you got five thousand meter relay, you got five teams in there, four guys each. One guy is racing around the perimeter, the other, the next guy in line is on the inside of the track. He's skating because the next when the first the guy on the track, when he's done. The guy's got to be ready because he's going to push him. Now he goes off. It's yep. just 5,000 meters. It's nuts. And it's, it's without a doubt, going to be the most intense event in Sochi. I'm going with the men's snowboard super pipe this year. I think it's going to be pretty awesome. No Sean White at the X Games last week. Injury. Some people said he was ducking this Swiss snowboarder who ended up not landing this huge trick three times in a row, really anticlimactic because the X Games built up to it all night on Sunday, and he fell three times. But uh. he has done it before, so can he land that? Allegedly, Sean White can do that same big trick, the YOLO flip, and he's working on another big move. So I'm looking out for that. Also, you'll probably, uh, not a, this is a tease, but also giving away one of my future answers. Young Japanese Ayumu Hirano, like 16 years old, yeah. came second last year in the X Games to Sean White. Would be cool to see someone that young be the first person to beat White. So I'm watching the snowboard super pipe. Yeah, okay. I like it. I like it. All right, next topic. We also did this. The first few topics were, you know, holdovers from the 2012 we, we missed, games. Let's go. Wait, can we go back one? We missed. There we go. Oh, no. Is the graphic not in there? We might have a graphic error there. Ne uh, forward a little bit. This is, this is live production right here. Forward one more. Tom, thank you. All right. All right. We I missed, we missed a that. graphic slide in there. Sneak, let's go sneaky good event, and then we'll go right into uh, okay. favorite Olympic right. broadcast. Sneaky good Olympic event. Another holdover from the 2012 special edition of Pardon the Rick Eruption. I'm going to go with sport. One of the sports here is so actually a combined of, of the events. I think curling was probably the breakout event in Torino. I couldn't tell you what it was in Vancouver. But I like snowboard cross and ski cross. Okay. Uh, snowboard cross... Has been around since Torino. Two-time defending medalist Seth Westcott from the United States. He will not be there, so watch out for Nate Holland. And then his ski cross, I believe that also was in Vancouver it debuted. But, I mean, there's crashes on these courses, you know. Lindsay Jacob Ellis pulled one of the biggest follies in Olympic history when she went for some kind of grab when yep. she was winning in yep. Torino. Falls on the last jump after having a big lead. And, you know, she gets up, she has to take the silver. Probably the most upset anybody's ever been at a silver medal, besides the 1972 U.S. Olympic basketball Yes, team. that's true. That's true. Uh, we could also throw Michaela Maroney in there as well. Yeah. I'm going, my gut instinct was, even though everyone loves curling, I still, when I think sneaky good, I think curling, because you just, you don't hear about it. 
for like three and a half years at, at a time. And then, oh, it's the Winter Olympic season. Let me start watching curling if it's on. So that's my gun instinct. But I'm going to go snowboard and ski slope style. It's different. They're going, well, obviously it's different than the super pipe, but they're going down like a regular run, but there's rails and stuff. So they're doing some of those grinds. They're doing some flips. They're doing all sorts of stuff like that. Also saw a guy didn't use the ski poles while he was doing it. I thought that was cool. <laughs> that uh, is great. At first I was like, is that normal? I feel like they always have the ski poles, and I think they do. I think this guy was outside the norm. Yeah. I'm going to have to do more research on that. But keep an eye on that. It was an American guy who won. With, I think it was American. He might have been Canadian. Yeah. One of the two. Yeah, American and Canadian. Without, are without the slope stylish. Without the ski pole. Okay. Which was. I, I only know one uh, ski slope stylist, I think, and his name is Mark McMorris. And yep. He's from Canada. Yep. And he so. broke his ribs at the X Games. So Did he? It's going to be. So he's not in. He's not in. He's, I don't know if he's competing or not. I know he broke ribs. Ah, oh, man. I think he's going to try and You want it the out. best in the yep. Olympics. So I, I hope he has a, a healthy recovery. Now we're going to go to your favorite Olympic broadcaster. Well, we got NBC. They pointed up big time again for these yeah. games. I'm glad because I was hoping Fox didn't get yeah. the Olympics, and, and they, the NBC has it for a long time now. A lot of carryovers from London just because NBC has a lot of guys. Some guys are moving. Dan Hicks, he was doing long track speed skating. Now he's doing alpine skiing, which is supposed to be the premier thing to broadcast in the, in the Winter Olympics. But I'm going to stick to my American sport roots here and say Doc Emmerich, the hockey voice for NBC, just a great guy. Just yeah. like It made the Olympic final in 2010 better because Emmerich was there. And he's all over U.S. hockey. And he's got his, t his teammate, Eddie Olchek. I could give or take him. But I love Pierre Maguire between the, uh, between the glass, too. Yeah. All, really great. Pierre Maguire. Yeah, I'm going uh, with the man who ties everything together, has the biggest workload of anyone at NBC during the Winter and Summer Olympics, Bob Costas. Okay. The guy is the Olympics. You can't think of Olympic broadcasting without thinking Bob Costas in studio, hard-hitting interviews most of the time. Hard-hitting might be a little That's, that's giving him a lot of credit, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just interviews in general. Yeah, the interviews in general are great. Gets, he, he has some great, he, and he's just always got one or two snarky, snide, Bob Costas, I'm just better than you yes. type lines. Every time, every broadcast, every time he's on air, and you just think, that's why Bob is the best, because he does stuff like that. You know he enjoys it, knows he loves it. Bob Costas, my, my favorite. I, I like Bob, and uh, he's setting a record now, because this is his ninth or tenth Olympics uh, broadcasting primetime. He's the primetime host. Yeah, obviously. and he's, he's not going anywhere. No, no. Soon. He he cherishes that role more, oh, than, yeah. more than his MLB Network uh, baseball calling role or his Sunday Night Football in America uh, act that he puts on. So, you know, I like Bob. Yeah. Bob's the man. All right. I think we're going to hit our first time since 2012, yes. July 2012. Wow. We're hitting the big board. We got the big board back. Instead of 32 sports, we only got 15, so yep. it's a, a little bit shorter. But it's going to pack just made as much it, punch. Made it tough to rank these. Not a lot of sports. And when I was thinking, because Summer Olympics, it took, there are like seven sports that you just hate. And so you yeah, go to your bottom. Yeah, exactly. I only had a couple that I was thinking uh, instantly go right to I the was bottom. Think, I was so. going to bring up the same thing. So why don't we get the big board out here. And uh, who's going first here? You want me to go well, first? Yeah, you go. You want me to go first here? Yeah. Well, I got to pick my, uh, I have them in. Okay, here we go. Sport number 15. Ski jumping. Okay. Uh, they introduced women's speed jumping, uh, ski jumping, not speed jumping, into this games. And there's a 19-year-old from the United States, Sarah Hendrickson. She might get some air time because she's pretty attractive. She's 19, so she's a little bit younger than I am. And she's the gold medal favorite. But it's just jumping off. Like I think they take into account distance as well as technique, but... You, you really do the same thing, it looks like. I mean, they push you down the same, you have the same exact spots for your skis, and you just go off it. That's what yeah. I think when I see ski jumping. So, you do wear cool, like, alien suits, though. That is true. Uh, my number 15, this is testing the gloves that I have on, if I can be accurate enough. But we're going cross country skiing, just because it's a lot like triathlon, marathon. You watch it. Not a whole lot going on. It's kind of long. 
usually they only have like two or three cameras set up, and I, I, I just don't enjoy cross country skiing. I, I can understand how it's difficult. Oh yeah. I'm, I just don't. I'm not gonna. I'm not setting the DVR for cross country skiing. I, I feel you on that one because that's my number fourteen sport. But the good thing about the uh, sport of cross country skiing is Al Trotwig is the play by play guy, yeah. and he brings the Olympic aspect to it to a good level. He's yeah. the gymnast guy in the uh, summer games, but. Uh, I can't get too much into cross country skiing. Yep. My next 14, biathlon. Just not setting my DVR for biathlon this year. Just not going to do it. That's the gun. That's They got the gun, which is you cool. Line up, which is cool because you line up on the ground. Which I, I, like, I like that to an extent. Not enough to get me to watch. Sorry. Okay. My number 13 sport, skeleton. Okay. Skeleton. Um, I don't like these... Icy, like racing down the ice, cause your time. I feel like you have no coordination at all. It's just you go and that your well, you your can, momentum takes you. I think, but I guess I guess you can wiggle your shoulders or I, something. I think that is a misconception. I think <laughs> there's a lot that goes into it, and there's a good chance, like well, not a good chance, but there is a chance, as we saw four years ago, you can die because you're going like a billion miles an hour on those things. Not oh, that fast, but you're going feel, fast enough. If you if you don't steer right, you're going to crash. That was in and luge. You can die. That was in luge. Skeleton but it's is just like the first. same thing. It's you're essentially very similar. But I'm not like that guy had very little training, and he when he made the Olympics. And it was, Still, it, uh, all right. I give him credit you, for that aspect, but I don't. Okay. I, I I don't really like it much. It's confusing, like luge and skeleton, which is head first, not head first. Yeah. My thirteen. It's funny as you said this. That's the this is the premier event to call. Wow, that's Alpine that's low skiing. down there. Doesn't do anything for me. Don't want to see you guys zigging and zagging, weaving down a hill. Doesn't. Doesn't. Well, you know what is cool. It doesn't. I don't. I I would like them to all be going at the same time instead of one at a time. If they all went down at the same time, and then you'd have huge crashes and like we you could actually. Anyways. Any anything where it's like a time trial like that, where one guy goes, next guy goes, and you're just racing against the clock. Not great. You get everyone going, zigging and zagging. That that is fun. Well, that'd be snow, uh, ski cross. Yeah, it's essentially the same thing. Yeah. So I mean, and so it's in there. Alpine <laughs> skiing. That's why you're down thirteen. Ski cross. I like the shots for like from the behind the shots when they weave around a corner and they jump. Like they get a little air time. They go like go like a hundred fifty feet. It seems like in the yeah. air down there, which is pretty cool. But if you get the aerial shot, the usual typical shot, you can't really tell that. Uh, 12, luge, it's along the lines of skeleton, um, they're essentially 12A and 12B, but I had to put one 12 and one 13. Yep. 12 for me, Nordic combo, you talked about it, Americans aren't very good at it. You they used to it. not be. Yeah, true. <laughs> As you mentioned, ski jumping is a part of it. Ski jumping, it is what it is, you get pushed, you're on tracks, you fly, I don't know. It's, I think I don't know how much train. Obviously, a lot of training goes into it, but I'm not sure how much it takes to go from never done it before to elite. I bet you it doesn't take as long as other sports to go from okay. never like golf takes you forever. Uh, all right, all right. I I think it's a tough sport. All right, here we go. Eleven bobsled. If uh, you know me and Jared, if you ever witness a conversation between us, it's very likely that you'll find that I think bobsledding is a non-athletic sport. Whereas you think it takes some I athletic just, we, ability? We, we touched on some of it there. With I'm the not going to say it doesn't take any athletic ability, but to get to Olympic level, it doesn't take long. Look at some no, of these uh, yeah, U.S. Olympians. I'm not our, I, this year and in past years. Herschel Walker was a U.S. Olympian because he was also on the bobsled Wal team. Herkel, Herschel Walker was also a physically athletic specimen. Oh, that's true. But Lolo Jones is the same. And the list goes on and on. The, those crossover athletes... Sort of freakishly talented athletes. Well, I mean, the U.S. lead driver is Steve Holcomb, and he's... Not a freakish he's, athlete. He has more body fat than Vladimir Putin does. That's true, but I think that's a different role than what, like, Walker... He is the does. driver, whereas these other athletes that pick up the sport usually are... 11? Not the drivers. Sticking with my ski jumping theme, just not much to it. Not a lot of substance, not a lot of meat and potatoes. Just, uh, it'd be all broth if it was soup, so that's what I'm... <laughs> Ski jumping, ski jumping, Nordic combo, all broth. Okay, so the last, uh, the last event of this segment of the big board, I got biathlon. Um, 
it's it's semi cool, but I think what happened in this Olympics is they're using instead of real bullets, they're using laser beam bullets or something, yeah. which is just totally uncool. You yeah. got to use real bullets. You've been using that since the sport has been a sport. Yeah. Plus, with biathlon, if you told somebody name the two sports in a biathlon, no way are they getting shooting and cross country skiing. Yep. Who invented that? It's a good question. Seems like it has roots in in wartime. Mm -hmm. I'm going ten. Freestyle skiing. And uh, talking about it, this is where we're getting to. It's not because you're not good that you're in my first segment of games. The stuff in front of the, these sports up here, good stuff. That's why you're down there freestyle ski. So don't feel bad freestyle skiing. Your, your list so far is more skiing-esque yeah. stuff. And mine has got a balance of skiing and, and the ice yep. sports. The ice sports are just thrown off the board right now. Ski None jumping of them right now, what that would be, is, is not doing well. Cross-country skiing actually doing the worst. Yeah. Ski jumping's right there. Sorry, cross-country skiers. Okay. All right, we're jumping back into the main topics here. We did this one in the summer preview. Got to do it again. Looking at the local sports scene, who are, who are you pulling for the most? Um, well, I'm going to go very good chance that this, this there's a guarantee that this team is going to medal, the United States women's hockey team. Yeah. But they also have five girls from my home state, Massachusetts, on the team. So you say that like you're the only one from Massachusetts. Well, on, I mean, you know, I was the first one to I'm say more it. From, this I'm show. from I'm from Matt like Mass Mass. You're from Mass Rhode Island. Border. No, it's it's Dude, <laughs> your third baseline is in Rhode Island. I'm from you can't go anywhere in Hudson and not be out of Massachusetts. Well, I consider myself straight up from Massachusetts. I yeah. I compete in MIA where, athletics. Where were you born? You know, there we uh, go. <laughs> I don't usually just classified. There, get that information. If you know there, the, if you know the answer, you know who you know who's more from Massachusetts. Oh, anyways, there's five girls in the United States women's hockey team from Massachusetts out of a 23 girl roster. Whereas there's no men. Yeah. On the men's hockey team. Keith from, Yandel was close. Well, yeah, Keith Yandel was close. Uh, Tim Gleason. Yeah. Uh, I or no, Ryan Whitney was on the last time in 2010 winning silver medal, but he originally didn't make it. He had to have someone get. Uh, hurt for him to even be on the team. That would have been two straight Olympics without a mass native. On it's crazy. The, you think a lot of team. a lot of those heroes from 1980, Massachusetts guys. Uh, Aruzioni, yeah. Jim Craig, Jack O'Callaghan. It's crazy. Okay. All right. Now I'm going. I'm going with uh, Rhode Islander Marissa hey. Castelli. Uh, I know her because I saw the the package that the people at NBC10 were editing together. Said she's from Rhode Island. That's who I'm using for PTR. That's how my life crosses over. Um, one of the interns at NBC10 went to high school with her. Said she Cranston went to CCRI. West. Yep, CCRI because she was good at skating. A new school was not something she needed to focus on. So well for the, for the time being, I'm yeah. sure she'll go back oh, to yeah, school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Simon Schnapier, yep. her Paris partner, Massachusetts native. Yep. Well, he's actually born in Russia. And uh, now he's relocated when he was a youngster to Massachusetts. So, he fun fact about them: she's like five foot, he's like six foot four. So there's like a that much gap between them. So that's pretty nuts, huh? Yeah. It's pretty gnarly. All right, uh, I think we're ready for our next topic. Okay, why don't you go ahead, Jared, and give us your breakout sport? This is weird because I have it up on the big board, and we've kind of knocked it a little bit, but I'm going ski jumping. It's a sport that, because I have so much trepidation on why it is a sport that I want to watch, and I feel like I'm going to enjoy it, and that it's going to be a sport moving forwards that I continue to follow. Right now, it's low because I don't, I, I, there's a certain amount of ignorance outside of the core, like down the slope, jump as far as you can. I'm gonna watch it, learn, maybe I'll like it, Maybe I won't. I don't know. But I think if anything's going to be a breakout sport, because, I, you know, the other sports, they kind of are where they are. I don't think, you know, bobsled, skeleton, luge, anything, they'll, they'll break out. Curling how do you get into those out. sports? Yeah, I, I have no clue. So I'm going, how do you get into ski jumping is a good question, too. True. I'm going ski jumping as my breakout sport. Um, all right. My breakout sport, I'm a fan of it, but I think the general America is not hasn't really caught on it's short track speed skating mm -hmm. it only debuted i think in 94 in the olympics so it's relatively new to the olympic program and what's good about it is it's, te it's on a hockey uh a rink hockey rink so you can practice pretty well as whereas 
uh, long track speed skating, most of these guys are like uh, inline skaters turned yep. winter Olympians, which is weird, you know, because like I don't know anyone who inline skates yeah. for an athletic event, but yeah. you see those guys who get like the blades, like the wheels, like are from like here to here, yeah. like five, six wheel blades. Um, but yeah, I'm going short track. Those are like the speed skating blades. Yeah, 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 too. yeah. So I'm going short track speed skating. I'm a fan. But more people need to catch on, and that's why I think Apollo Ono is one of the, the great ambassadors. Yeah. Uh, he's still doing subway commercials, you know. He still has his face out there. He still's got that vintage bandana wrapped yeah. around his head. He's still friends with Shiny yeah, Games. He's, he's probably I don't know this for a fact, but I'm assuming he's gonna have something to do with the NBC coverage. Yeah, yeah, uh, he'll, in, he'll in be the there for sure. I don't think they can. Do I know it. we got Johnny Weir there, obviously. Uh, Sarah yeah. Hughes, former gold medalist in uh, figure skating. Uh, Tara Lipinski, another former gold medalist. Um, Sasha Cohen, another medalist in yep. figure skating. A any Nancy Kerry, oh, just female yeah. figure skaters who've medaled for the United States, yep. minus Michelle Kwan, are going to be a part of this coverage. And uh, I'm thinking Ono will be back, too. They love Ono. Love yeah, him. yeah, love definitely. Him. All right, moving on. Who's going to be the breakout athlete in the Sochi Games? All right, well, I think this is a clear-cut, easy answer. Uh, I hope you're not going to go the same way. Cause, no, I don't think I am. All right, because I'm going, it's obviously going to be an American. It's obviously going to be a young person um, who looks good in front of the cameras, but also has to deliver a a medal of sorts. And this girl has, you know, five events or so. Michaela Schifrin. NBC's really hoping this girl is going to take over because there's no Lindsey Vaughn, and alpine skiing is one of the big events on the NBC coverage that'll get prime time airtime. So Michaela Schifrin, she's 18 years old. She's from Vermont. She's already killing it on the World Cup uh, stage in alpine skiing. So she's got five events she's going to be in. She has a good chance to medal in a few of them. She gets a gold medal, instant American hero. Yeah, she's got that Missy Franklin situation that she's right on the cusp of breaking through like that. And we all know Missy Franklin pretty big after the summer games. We yeah. both said she would pretty much be the breakout, and she was, no questions asked. G Douglas is close, but mm. uh, Franklin's ahead. Uh, I'm going... Mentioned him earlier, Ayuma Hirano, young Japanese snowboarder, was out of the X Games. Some people were questioning if he was really hurt. Again, and the same thing went with White because he was there. Are they hurt or do they just not want to throw down a couple weeks in front of the Sochi Games? I think the young Japanese kid's going to win the gold medal, which would be a huge upset yeah. because, as you'll see next topic, Sean White's pretty much a lock to win gold. So uh, the young, He's not my lock. The young, the young kid gets it done. Breakout star, you're going to see him year in, year out at the X Games if you're uh, stateside. And now the X Games does all those, they do it in France and, uh, and all that other stuff. Tignis. He's, he's the guy. Teens, it's how it's pronounced. <laughs> I knew I didn't have it right because no French word is ever pronounced yep. how it looks. Um, okay. I was going to say my second, second to last, uh, second runner up in that is J.R. Stelsky, yep. uh, short track speed skater. Yep. Uh, he won a few medals, a few bronze, one individual, one in the team pursuit in Vancouver. Now that Ono's gone, they need because Ono and Vaughn were just one and two. Yeah, the, the greatest Olympic couple ever. Like yeah, imagine NBC would have televised their wedding if they happened to get married. Oh yeah. Now if Selsky and Schifrin get married, they will probably do the same thing. But they got to win a few medals. Yep. Uh, all right. So our next event, like you said, you already brought it up. Yep. Why don't you give us I'm a little going, bit more I'm, detail? I'm going Sean, Sean White, Gold Lock. Didn't compete at the X Games. Ready to go. He's going to have obviously. He's always on the cutting edge of new tricks, going big, going huge, a lot of spins, a lot of flips. I think he's going to do it again. He seems unbeatable. And this made me think about a week ago, are we worldwide in sports in one of the greatest eras of singular athletes being dominant? When you look at guys like Federer for a while, Nadal, even though he had just lost yesterday. Serena Williams. Open, Serena, Ronaldo, Messi. Ronaldo. It's as being dominant in their sport as individuals. Obviously, LeBron doesn't win a bunch of titles. LeBron, Manning, guys like There's that. There's no baseball where, guy. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Baseball, well, baseball is in a, and, and it's going to take a while be? because you have to reset what a great norm is because the steroid norm isn't possible now. So you have to sort of reshift, and we'll figure that out in like 20 years. There'll be a okay. breakout star. But almost every sport has someone who you can legitimately say is top five all time as an athlete in their sport, which Floyd Mayweather. Is, is interesting. Floyd Mayweather, you can't say top five, but he's definitely the most popular boxer. Yeah. Had to get some boxing records on me. Yeah. And, you know. All right, so my gold lock, uh, you probably don't know him now. Tiger Woods as well, obviously. Yes, Tiger. You probably don't know him now, but come in a few weeks, when these games kick off, one week from today, 
They actually start on Thursday, but the opening ceremonies. Yep. Uh, his name's Felix Locke, German loser. Germans dominate in the lose competition. Yep. Now, this guy, I was correct in my 2012 prediction, Lynn Don, badminton. Yeah, you were. Badminton singles. You were. Uh, I didn't know him either until I did a little bit of research. If anyone didn't know this guy. When you're done, I'll, I'll bring up a point, but go ahead. Felix Locke, uh, Germany, loser, 2010 Olympic champion, and he's the two-time reigning world champion in the sport. Sometimes we go back and we, we re-watch, re-watch these shows, and you end up contradicting yourself like in the first five minutes and maybe like the first and like the last five minutes. I just contradicted myself in back-to-back topics saying that I thought Hirano was going to win the Super Pipe, and then the next topic I said white is a lock, which that's just <laughs> not possible for that to happen. So contradictions, they happen. Yeah. So either way, I'm going to be right. Are on you going to put money on one it? Or if you had money on it? I put, was going to put money on Maroney, and that didn't happen. So <laughs> I'm, I'm out of the betting game. Exactly, exactly. Next topic. So obviously, with uh, probably because of the Boston Marathon bombings last year, outdoor open events, the Super Bowl this week, from what I've heard, security through the roof, Sochi, same thing. How prevalent are those security threats? I think it's important because, I mean, there were obviously bombings only in, uh, I think it was 500 miles away. I don't know. It was either 200 or 600, and I just 500 ballparked it. But uh, the bus bombings there, if you've seen the pictures, the bus is basically decimated. You can hardly tell the thing in the bus. Uh, That was a suicide bomber, I believe, or was that a car bomb? I don't know. All right. Anyways, there's supposed to be three suicide female bombers in the Sochi area. One supposedly in Sochi who is supposed to, like, you know, terrorist threat these games. Athletes seem to not be super, super worried about it. The NHL is taking, like, semi-precautions. Like, they're ready for it, but I don't think anything's going to happen there. But if you remember back to the Athens games in 2004, there was big security issues the U.S. men's basketball team, nobody wanted to go, so you got this people like just graduated college going, mm-hmm. and they won a bronze medal. So, I mean, if I was a member of the media, I would probably be going to this. If I was a family member of an athlete competing, I'd be going. But if I was a fan thinking about going and had the decision now to go or not, I would probably be worried for myself and would not go. Yeah, I, I would probably... Just because I don't like being out in the cold for too long, I wouldn't go in general. If I was a fan, media, I would. Athlete, I would. Family of an athlete would, obviously. Uh, But we know these threats, you have to take them serious. These things can happen. We just saw it. You want to make sure that nothing like that happens. Um, I I think that steps will be taken. We'll see if it will. Hopefully, you know, you, you want it to work and all that, but... I feel like there hasn't been a lot of good since Sochi became the the host. It's oh, just no. been issue after issue after issue. And I feel like usually you don't have that many. Usually there's like one or two like little niche things. With Sochi, it seems like every week there's this, there's this, there's this. And it's just, I mean, I understand you want to go to Russia, a huge country, huge sporting nation, but they've got to clean it up a little bit. Sochi's just a weird location if you yeah. look geographically. It's like the uh, tropical resort town of Russia, yeah. And it's Vladimir Putin's favorite, like, vacation destination. So he's just like, let's throw sixty billion dollars at this and let's get the Olympics here. Yeah, good for Putin. Uh, he's he's controlling everything. Oh yeah, he's pretty much controlling the show right th- right now. Too. Yeah, he's watching over. <laughs> All right. So the next topic, Jared. In typical PTR fashion, yeah. scale 1 yeah. to 10, 1 being, uh, I don't care much at all, 10 being, I am very, very upset and I'm going to rewatch her 2010 runs just because I want to see her. How disappointed are you that Lindsey Vaughn will not be participating in Sochi? She will be a member of the media. Yes. I'm going, like, way above 10. Not because I care. I, the way that you put the 10, re, I'm not going to go back and rewatch it. <laughs> okay. It's literally only because I don't get to see Tiger Woods dressed eerily similar to how I am right now. Maybe more Nike swooshes visible oh, on yeah. camera. But that would have been the funniest camera shot. Usually I hate crowd girlfriend shots I don't, or you know significant other shots. I don't like them. Tiger, I want them ev- after every run. Not even hers. Every Alpine skiers run, go to Tiger, see what he's doing. Then back to the next one, back to Tiger, and back and forth. 
Maybe he'd do a little snow golf while he's out there snow doing, golf. work on his swing or he, stuff like he'd that. He'd have no problem talking to Dan Hicks because Dan they, Hicks yeah, is calling they Alpine bring, skiing. They'd bring him in. They'd bring him into the booth, and he would probably not say anything of note, but it would still be hilarious. Maybe he'd have a, the two hands on a, a hot mother. Oh, absolutely. Or something like that to keep probably put a little Russian vodka in he's there. A, he's a California kid. Probably is. I wonder if he's even seen snow in his lifetime because he's from California. You play golf in warm weather. You're in Florida all year anyways. I wonder if he's even ever been in snow. We yeah. would have seen it. No, we are not. Knee problems from Lindsey Vaughn. Uh, I'm also up there. I'm going 10 for the same exact reason. Yeah. I mean, it would have been nice because Vaughn's a metal threat, and obviously I want as much medals as possible for the United States. Yep. Um, but on the other hand, she's dating Tiger Woods now, which is just one of the most hilarious uh, celebrity sport couples going right now. Uh, right up there with Red Fu and Victoria yes. Zarenka. It was. I was watching. Oh, uh, I don't even remember what I, I was watching the Australian Open this year, and her match just ended. But they were in the tunnel getting ready for like uh, the next match out on the court, and you just see Red Fu in the background <laughs> heading towards the locker room, and like, that's never not going to be funny. Yeah. When you see Red Fu, big afro at at a tennis event, hilarious. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm disappointed because exactly what you said. I mean, I don't think he would be doing any interviews with Dan Hicks, even though Dan Hicks has covered him many times for NBC Golf. But just him, they definitely have to get a crowd shot of him. Some people might be walking up to him for autographs or golf tips, either or. And maybe he would both. shut them down big time. Oh, absolutely. Oh, he probably time, has he probably has security yeah. all around. He he probably would stand. He he get his own little cluster in yeah. that because everyone's packed together with their hot chocolate, like yeah. you said. I definitely wanted to see him drinking some hot chocolate that definitely would have had Russian vodka in it because he probably doesn't know a whole lot about skiing. No, not at all. I really doubt that. All right. Back, back to the big to board. the big board. All right, Warehouse. Man, you got to start this big board session off because I went first last time. So what do you got for your number nine uh, right here? Do you have it ready to go? I didn't write my numbers on the back like you did, and I just dropped one, so these could be out of order. My number nine, this is going to be similar to you, Luge. Speed. Incredible. I enjoy watching it if I'm if uh, if I stumble across it. And I don't seek it out, but if it's there and it's on, I watch it. Enjoy it. Luge is on there. Okay, my number nine. One of the premier events of the games, and it was at ten, but I bumped it back up because of Marissa Castelli, the uh, Cranston native, who's going to be in these games. Look out for her and Simon Schnappier in the team event because there's a good chance that the U.S. team will get a medal because they got a very deep squad. New event to these games, team figure skating. Um, individually, well, not individually, but in the pairs event, they, they don't look to medal, but I'll be watching her event. Those figure skaters, man, those are the short and the long program. The long program's like four minutes of skating. It's, yeah. And they do a, uh, Castilian Schnappier do a, uh, a quad spin which they tried in the U.S. Championships and she fell, but I guess she did good on the element. It's like Mikhail Maroney in her yep, vault yep. performance in 2012. I don't think, I think this is going to be a situation in figure skating where there's going to be a lot of Russian medals and a lot of Russian gold medals in Russia. Russian judges, you always hear the cliche. If you're Russian, I'd be pumped about the figure skating competition. Number eight, skeleton, like you said, 8A, 8B, 9A, 9B, Skeleton, Luge, pretty much the same thing. Link them together. Yep. Put it at number 8. All right, so my number 8, snowboarding. Yep. A lot of different things in snowboarding. you got the snowboard cross, which I probably like the most. you got the snowboard half pipe, which, I mean, I watch because Sean White's a pretty dominant. The U.S. women are dominant. Kelly Clark, watch out for her. Um, but... The problem with that is, like, they do a bunch of tricks and stuff, and they all look the same to me because I'm not a huge snowboard guy. Yeah. I only watch it when the Olympics are on. I sometimes catch it in X Games, but Olympics pretty much are it. And then uh, slope style, I I'm excited for that. That's going to be on Thursday before the opening ceremony, so you can catch the Flying Tomato before the opening ceremonies even kick off. I'm going number seven, bobsled. These three, I linked them together. Similar in nature, different in vehicle. Seven, eight, nine makes too much sense to me. Yeah, we got them clustered bo on both yeah. ends. You give it a little bit more respect than I do. I, I really don't. I think I could be an Olympic bobsledder if I put my mind to it. Do you think I could be? Uh, probably. Thank you. All right, seven, curling. Don't know the rules of curling right now, but I'm sure, because this happens every Olympics, as soon as I watch it for five minutes, I know exactly what's going on. Shuffleboard on ice, 
John Schuster is the men's team skipper. Yep. I think that's what it's yeah, called, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, he faltered big time. He won a bronze as a team member in Torino, but as skipper in Vancouver, it was pretty bad. Also, a fun fact, I don't think he'll be there at this Olympics, but at the last Olympics, San Francisco 49er tight end Vernon Davis was in the booth talking to the guys because he's a curling uh, yep. fan. The U.S. team invited him up there. He had a good time watching him curl, taking in other events, you know, talking to the media. So, uh, not a US, the U.S. team's probably not going to win a medal. They could sneak in there, though. I'm going number six. Speed skating, fun, but also not that great. All the dudes are built similarly. They're all like six foot four, six foot five, like super gangly. And they're when they do the straight on, when they're coming down the ice, they're all like really like funky like that. It, it looks weird, but it's just because they're the technique and their body type. Yeah. And and their, their thighs are just oh, yeah. enormous. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. Not great. Right in the middle. All right, number six for me, alpine skiing. Um, enjoyable, but if if alpine skiing was in the Summer Olympics, to, hypothetically, it'd probably be like 18 out of 32. Yeah. Like, the Summer Olympics are just way better. But alpine skiing I can get into because Schifrin's going to be in it. The Americans last time had quite the haul. I think they had five medals. Uh, plus, you also got that Julian Mancuso, Lindsey Vaughn rivalry that's not going to be there this time. Another reason why Vaughn not there stinks. Um, what was the one other thing I wanted to say? Oh, Bodie Miller. Yep. Five. Figure skating. Sort of a poor man's gymnastics in the winter. Same sort of drama, same sort of age group, same sort of intrigue, the judging, whatnot. It's fun, not that great. Last Olympics was great because you had Lysacek and the Russian dude going back and forth in the media, Plachenko. which was hilarious. <laughs> Plachenko looks like he's like 50 years old. Dude, it's we should have got Plachenko on the big board. How yeah, great is his hair? He is a goofy looking dude, but he can figure skate. That's why it's number five. Um, it, it's a very good comparison between a poor man's gymnastics yeah. because you got essentially the Tim Daggett of the Winter Olympics and Scott Hamilton, yep. the, the an analyst for figure yes. skating. Very, very similar guys. Okay. Uh, five for me, freestyle skiing. I like the uh, ski cross, which the Americans aren't too too into. Then you, they got the slope style, which I'm hoping to see some people without the uh, balance poles. Yep. And then uh, you got moguls, which one of my favorites, Hannah Carney, is going to be taking part in. She's the defending gold medalist in moguls. Plus one of my old boys who's doing the color commentary, probably should have been on my best broadcaster list. Hopefully you watch these MTV uh, Real World Road Rules challenges back from like 2004. Johnny Mosley, yes, yeah, ex gold medalist. He used to host those things. They were way better when he was doing it. Now it's like TJ Lavin, yep. who I don't hate. I don't really watch him anymore. Yeah. But those that was in, that was in the heyday. Those Johnny are, Mosley hosted Real World's show. getting close to like 30 years of existence. Well, it's uh, in his 30th season now. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. I think 91 is when it starts, so 20, 22 years. But Quite the run they got going. There. All right, number four, last one for my segment, curling. This is a sport that I will. See, now we're getting into four up or sports that I'm going to actually look for and try and watch. Curling is one. There's something about it being, it's sort of docile in the sense that you can just kind of lay down and you're right on the verge of maybe napping sometimes when it's on. But it's interesting, good. I enjoy it, like you said. Right now, if you ask me any of the rules, could not tell you one, probably. Once, I, once you watch for like five minutes, you're like, all right, now I remember what's going on. Curling, four. I would DVR it. Plus, it's also interesting to see, like, the, the skipper shoots the thing, yep. the, the stone, and then he demands what, what you do. So then he screams, on, on, and everyone starts wiping, yep. you know? It, it gets interesting. Okay. Uh, I also wanted to say one of my favorite play-by-play -play guys who will be doing freestyle skiing. Todd Harris doesn't get enough credit. He's a he's really a guy across all sports at NBC. He was doing the Rugby Sevens tournament last week, which if we did a big board for the 2016 Winter Olympics, Rugby Sevens would probably be top eight. Okay, speed skating, number four. Um, long track, not as cool as short track, but Shawnee Davis will be a part of it, and then Team Pursuit, which Shawnee Davis won't be a part of because he's just Shawnee Davis. Um, U.S. should medal. And then the girls, Heather Richardson's a name you should look out for. All right, we got one more set of topics, and then we'll hit the big board one more time, and then we'll be out of here. Yeah, well, we got we got two more big board segments. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. we have two more. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so Jared Lolo Jones, 
She's been shut out two Olympics before, but those are in the Summer Games. How is she going to do this time around? I don't think she's going to medal. Okay. She's, I don't, I, I'll say for sure, not going to get gold, which is ultimately what she wants. I think maybe out super outside chance of medaling, but I'm going to go, no, she's not going to medal. It's nice. It's fun. It'll be a cool story. NBC will blow it up. She'll probably get interviewed regardless of how they finish. Maybe she'll cry. Oh, again. dude, Maybe dude. she won't. Lolo Jones. I'm glad she's in another Olympic Games. You're glad, and NBC is glad. There's yeah. a rumor going around that NBC gave a little whisper in the ear to USA bobsledding and said, pick Lolo. We need people to cover for these games. Tons of Lolo stuff. I don't think she'll medal either. Um, she has been winning some medals on the uh, World Cup bobsledding circuit. Yeah. Um, I don't even know if that's what it's called, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and she's teamed up with Jasmine Fenlator. Definitely mispronounce her name. Former college track athlete. So there's two track stars on the same sled, but one team that is supposed to maybe sneak up in the medal count is uh, lead uh, lead driver, whatever you call that in bobsledding. Jeez, I need to follow bobsledding yeah. for this topic. Is uh, Jamie Gruber, Grubel. I knew her last name, didn't know the first name. She's teamed up with Lauren Williams, two-time Olympic medalist in track. I don't know if you remember her. Athens Games, silver medalist in the 100 meters. She also dropped the baton in Beijing, if you remember that. And then she also won uh, the 4x100 gold medal in London. So Lauren her. Williams. Another track another track athlete that nobody cares about. Yeah. We only care about Lolo. Lolo didn't win that's, the medals. Lauren true. Williams is one of few. That's true. Yeah, very true. There's only a certain amount of track athletes anyone cares about, to be honest. Absolutely. With you, outside of the track community. Uh, it's so. Essentially, Usain Bolt and Lolo Jones is probably yeah, number two. Yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, let's move on. Next topic. So, will Russia's policy towards gays affect the games? The games. The, ga the games themselves will not be affected. No. I'm, sure there's, I'm sure there's gay and lesbian athletes that are going to be at these games. The U.S. is sending a contingent just there to support it's gay athletes, I'm pretty sure. Billie Jean King, Johnny Weir. Uh, I suggest Google image searching Johnny <laughs> Weir if you're comfortable with your sexuality. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, 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 I'm cool with gay people, so like, I don't care about these yeah. things. But Russia, you can't even, like, the rule is, the law is you can't have any, uh, what is it, homophobic, you can't look homophobic or yeah. do any, any homophobic propaganda in public. Or you'll be tossed into jail. But they say the fans, the athletes will be fine. But I think they'll be fine. I think I think yeah. they're gonna put on a good show. I think Russia's really trying to get the world to notice how bad Sochi isn't. Because yeah. if you watch real sports from a few months ago, they made Sochi look like a pretty terrible place to be. Yeah, and uh, and I think it's not gonna affect the the actual competition. Not gonna affect the athletes. It, you'll probably get at some point during the games a two or three minute Bob Bob Costas editorial about it. That'll be about it. It's just another thing that NBC can touch on, bring into the broadcast, bring light to it, and uh, and just kind of raise awareness type situation. And I, I think that's going to be it. Not going to be a huge deal. Will be a factor for that five or six minutes. Now, will any athlete do a little like a, a gay or lesbian athlete or even a straight mm -hmm. athlete do some sort of act to? Uh, Maybe show support. Maybe I think maybe yeah. I think that I think that's gonna happen. I think and, it I, will. and I hope it does. Um, I hope something cool. Something cool. You got to make a cool stand. Yeah. Not something just just dead. You know. Yeah, I think it will. All right, let's move on. Well, we did a countdown for the Summer Olympics. We did. We're just gonna go with one one sole Olympian for this topic. So who want, who wants to go first? You want me to go first? I'll, I'll take you this first one time. first. I'm going best looking Olympian. I understand that the Well, we topic, didn't really say it, I so if you can't, if you're blind, yeah. you want to hear what we're saying. I'm going Lynn Hogg. Uh, I, I don't know if I pronounced that right or not. Norwegian snowboarder was at the was at the previous games in Vancouver. Fell on both of her runs, scored an 11.5. That I don't know why that's hilarious to me, but anyways, 11.5 is her score. She's really attractive. Uses Twitter to let you know that. I appreciate that. Lynn Hogg, Norwegian snowboarder. So she's a, I'm, pulling, I'm pulling, pulling for her to not not score an 11.5 this year. Okay, okay. Lynn Hogg, I'll look out for her. My number one was also a snowboarder, but she didn't make the team. Elena Height. Uh, you can look up. She's been in, like, Maxim shoots. 
Yep. So she's got some uh, scandalous photos on there. But I'm going to have to switch. I didn't do too much research because I was really banking on Elena Height. And then I, you know. So I'm going to go Julia Mancuso, Olympic alpine skier. I think she's way better looking than Lindsey Vaughn. People, like, throw themselves at Lindsey Vaughn. It seems like they think she's, like, the most gorgeous thing ever. And I'm just like, mm, Julia Mancuso is better looking. And she's feisty. And, yeah, so... Julie Mancuso it is. <laughs> feisty. feisty. A feisty ah. little girl. All right. She could definitely kick my butt, I'm sure. We've got one more non-big board topic. Let's get right into it. Big question. What nation finishes atop of the medal count? Well, we need to separate what my thoughts on medal counts are and then what yours are. I think you go with the overall I'm medals. Total. I am strictly gold. You want to win, and the U.S. will come up short in that. I think in, in these games, I think it's going to be Canada. They're really a team that broke out in Vancouver because they had some sort of government aid thing like Beijing had with the Chinese team in 2008 where they just focused solely on 2010. But now I think it's going to carry over, unlike the Chinese in London. Canada, they got, they're going to be beneficial to the additions of the team figure skating competition and the slope style events because they're, they're good in those. They're going to medal in those. Yep. Plus they're going to medal in hockey. Both the teams will probably get some hockey medals. Figure skating, they're, di they're deep, like I said. So I'm going to go with the Canadians winning the overall gold medal count. Look out for Germany. U.S. will be up at the top, and I think Russia also. Yeah, I think uh, my pick is Russia. In Russia, usually that gives that home nation a boost to, to overperform to what you expect. And I think that amid some of the, the, the turmoil around Sochi, being being the host, some of the negatives around it, Russia is going to come together. They're going to have to pull a lot of upsets for it to happen, and they're also probably going to need maybe some backdoor deals. Which, not putting it outside of the realm of possibility, I'm taking the Russians. They'll be up there in hockey. They have a chance to medal. Obviously, Canada, USA, Sweden's probably in the mix as well. Russia's up there, so they have a chance in that sport. Figure skating, they'll get it done. Give me the Russians. Plus, you got to watch out for the U.S. versus Russia hockey game. 7.30 in the morning, the second Saturday of the games. That's probably the biggest preliminary hockey matchup in Sochi. So that, that was a can't-miss event that I thought you might say. All right, so we got another ranking uh, on here. And you, go, you look at the Summer Olympics, every country in the world gets in there. Yeah. Whereas in the Winter Olympics... We projected this graphic would cut off like 50% of our faces cutting off all yep, of it. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so, the sacrifice needed to be yes, made. Yes, uh, yes. Stay in that spot. Yeah. So, but if you... I, I highly suggest go on to Wikipedia, type in 2014 Olympics, look at the countries in it. You'll find some really, really weird ones. The United States, like I said, 230 athletes. Um, the big namers will have more than like 100. But there's 53 teams there that have less than 10 athletes. Yep. So there's some weird ones in there. Yeah. And you, put, you you click on it, you see who these guys are, you're like, who would have thought? So we're going to give you our five weirdest countries that are partaking in these Olympics. Jared, give us number five. Yeah, my number five. Let me, let me just get everything set here. Yes. But like you said, some random nations as you get the – we'll look at the Jamaican bobsled team from Cool yeah. Runnings, one of the – Maybe top sports movies. <laughs> Very factually these, incorrect. These gloves are not allowing me to flip the page. Okay, we're set now. My number five is I'm going with San Marino. Like the Principality of, it, of Italy. It's in the middle of Italy, kind of. Not a whole lot of people, not a large population. In the games, they've got Vincenzo Michelotti and Federica Salome. I hope they both do well. San Marino, number five. Usually, you know them from FIFA soccer. They get crushed in every European and World Cup qualifying game. Usually they lose like 5-0, 6-0, 7-1. So San Marino, hopefully Vincenzo and Federica have themselves a nice game. So. All right, so my, I, gotta, I, I wrote my notes in the back of these here. Um, I'm going Nepal, which okay. isn't too weird because it's like a mountainous, like, wintry country. But they only have one athlete competing in these games. 44-year-old Jachiri Sherpa. 44. This is his third Olympics. He's doing cross-country skiing, the 15KM event. And he's the lone Nepalese competitor. But the cool thing about uh, Sh Sherpi, or whatever his name is, Jachiri Sherpi, <laughs> is that he is the world record holder in the Ultra Trail Dumont 
ultra marathon, which is a 103 mile marathon in the Alps. He's the world record holder. 103 miles. Guess how long it took him? Real quick. Give me a number. Uh, 20, 20 hours and five minutes. I was going to say 24 hours. Okay. 20 hours and four minutes. Imagine running that long. What okay. the heck is wrong with people? I'm going. My number four is Hong Kong. I don't think you expect a lot of winter athletes to come from Hong Kong. When I think Hong Kong, I've never been. I don't know what Hong Kong is like year white year year round. Tony Tech wise. didn't teach you anything about Hong Kong. But I'm thinking not a lot of space to do winter winter games in Hong Kong. Tight, a lot of people. Seven million. One athlete, Panto Barton Lu, fifteen hundred meter speed skater. Is that short track or long track? Long track. Long track. All right, my turn. Number yep. four. Sticking in this relatively same region of the world, the uh, Indian Ocean esque area is Timor Leste. Uh, you, you might, you, good chance you haven't heard of the country. It's actually somewhat sizable, but their lone competitor is Johan Gut Gonsalves. He is a men's slalom racer. He actually is born in France, and his mother is Timor Leistean, and he therefore gets to qualify for these games. Timor Leste. Good for him. Yeah. I'm going number three. Zimbabwe, African nation. If you're not South Africa and you're in the winter games, I find that shocking. I find it surprising and interesting. That's why you're number three, Zimbabwe. All right, my oh, number an athlete, Luke Stein, alpine skiing, and I actually think he's originally from South South Africa, <laughs> yeah. but qualifies for Zimbabwe. Okay, so. yeah, hey, that that stuff sort of, that ha stuff happens from yeah. time to time. I mean, look at uh, Gonzalves, Johan Gut Gonzalves yep. from. Uh, Timor Leste. Um, all right, so my number three, Tonga. Only a nation. If you follow rugby, very good nation. They beat the United States at the 07 Rugby World Cup. Only 50,000 people in this Pacific Island nation. Uh, so 50,000 versus the United States, 310 million. Good win for them. But they have one. Uh, they have one competitor. He's a loser. His name is Bruno Bonani, and he's caused a stir around the world because his real name was Fuheya Semi. But he changed it to Bruno Bonani because that's a German lingerie company and he wanted to be more marketable. So watch out for this guy in the right. competition. Good, good for him. Hopefully that lingerie company's paid him off. Number two, Togo. This is like a north, like West African nation, which is like Ivory Coast, Ghana, hot. You don't expect anyone to have ever even experienced snow in their life before from Togo. They're one athlete, uh, less, actually two athletes. Alessia Afi Dipole, alpine skiing, and Matilde Amivi Petijan, cross country skiing. Good for those two. Togo, putting Togo on the map. Not a big country either, so Togolese. Okay, I'm going to go in with my number two right here. Not a weird country, but the person who is representing this country just cracks me up. His name is Hubertus von Hohenlo. He is. Uh, a descendant of German royalty, born in Mexico. His mother is, or his grandmother is Mexican, so he qualifies because he's a Mexican citizen. But he spent most of his life living in Europe. But he's 54 years old. <laughs> <laughs> yes, bear with me now. He uh, he founded the Mexican Ski Federation in 1981, so he could compete in Sarajevo in 1984. This is his sixth time qualifying for the Olympics. Lone Mexican Olympian. And he's an alpine skier, so look out. He's also a photographer, a businessman, and a pop singer. Uh, I forget his pop singing names because obviously they'd be hilarious. Yeah. But Hobertus von Hohenlohe. I definitely mispronounced that. Good. It's totally, totally a royalty name though. Yeah. Hubertus von. If you if von is in your name. Yeah. You're you're some royalty. You're rich. My number one, Tajikistan. Two things. You ask most people on the street. Here's a globe, point to Tajikistan. I don't think anyone comes even close to where it is. Off the top of my head, I'm not even 100% sure where it is, but I love the name. You think Tropical Island? I think it's like in the Pakistan region of the world, Middle East. Two athletes, Andre Dragon, uh, alpine skiing, and, oh, never mind, I wrote down where it is. They have one athlete, Andre Dragon, alpine skier, and it borders Russia and China. There you so, go. It's in that. Same with world. Mongolia. Same with like North yeah. Korea. Nah, North Korea is, I don't think, it is both of those countries. My bad. I should know my East Asian geography better. Okay, my number one, Cayman Islands. Yep. It's another island nation of, it's actually a British territory, it's not a nation, of 50,000, set in the Caribbean. I had actually been there on a cruise. Nice. Uh, pretty cool place. I Humble wouldn't brag. have thought, 
would not have thought that any Winter Olympians came from this place, yep. but they have one. Dow Travers. Let me tell you about something about Dow. He's got a lot going for him. He was born in the island. He went to school in London. Then he went to college down the street at Brown University. He was a four-time All-Ivy League rugby player. Also is on the Cayman Islands national rugby team. He's going to be part of the Winter Olympics. You brought up rugby like 12 times. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, this guy, this guy's legit. Yep. This is a legit reason. Yep. You brought and, up rugby twice in just this one segment. Well, I mean, this is a rugby power. Yeah. Not quite a power, but they're respectable in the rugby world. And Dow Travers, how can I not? He's, he's an alpine skier from the Cayman Islands who was a four-time All-Ivy League rugby player at Brown University. I have to do that. Yeah. So watch out for him. Um, he also has red hair like Sean White, and he has some nickname along the lines of Red Hit and Hair. But I forget it off the top of my head. So you'll have to just watch the Alpine skiing event. He's in two competitions, slalom, giant slalom. Jamaica didn't make it. Well, it's not weird anymore because they're in the Olympics all the time now. Yeah, I still think it's weird. Yeah, it's still it's weird. Odd. <laughs> all right. You definitely, you said you can't point out Tajikistan on the map. You can't point out any of these places oh, besides no. maybe Mexico. No, you no, should be able to point out Mexico. Look, no, Nepal, maybe. The other one's no chance. Yeah. Hong Kong, you probably can. Well, you can general. If, you have, if you're decent at geography, you can general guess Cayman Islands and Tonga. Yeah. Hong Kong, general guess. Um, Togo and Zimbabwe yeah, that's, that's about San Marino, not even on most maps because it's tiny and it's just in the middle of Italy. But we've come to that time. Three through one on the big board power rankings. Okay. You want me to start it off? Go ahead. All right. My number three sport. Way down on your list. You probably forgot I even have it. Nordic combined. Yeah. Nordic combined. I mean, another example. If it was in the Summer Olympics, it'd be it'd be in the teens at best. But since it's the Winter Olympics, probably like one tenth as cool as the Summer Games. Mm. It's up there. But the good thing about Nordic combined, I'll tell you what this is. You do the ski jumping first. The Americans have Billy Demong. One of my. I'm on the Billy Demong train. Yeah, you are. Uh, and I'm just his last performance. The the U.S. team was was inspirational. Maybe Troutway brainwashed me or something. That probably had something to do with it. Yeah. Because uh, he also calls that. Yeah. But I'm gonna say about Nordic combined. Good thing about it, you do the ski jumping. Depending on how good you do in ski jumping, is when you start in the cross country ski aspect. So, whoever crosses that line first in cross country skiing wins. Which I like. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a cool aspect. I'm going uh, snowboarding number three. Super pipe is fun. It'll be awesome. Competitive field. Women's is pretty good as well. Snowboarding three. Now, we both have the same top two sports. Yep. Uh, I'm going ice hockey for number two. Ice hockey for number two. 2010 was a treat. We got the Americans playing well, the Canadians, who are all NHL players, playing well. It was just top of the world hockey. I mean, you, you couldn't ask for a better tournament. And plus, the Americans did good. That's a big reason why it was such a great tournament. This time around, the women's tournament always comes down to USA Canada. US seems to beat Canada in these like world championship tournaments that it's still US and Canada all the time. Former President Jacques Rogue says they need to improve or like cut hockey, women's hockey. Also look out for that game because they're gonna be playing it twice now because they changed the preliminary format. So we'll be playing the preliminary round and the gold medal round. But look out because these teams have thrown haymakers yes, in the run up multiple times. So you want to watch out for that. You don't want to miss a USA Canada women's game. Obviously, you don't want to miss the men's. And the good thing about the men's competition is I will watch games that the United States isn't in. I can't say that about summer sports like soccer, basketball, team sports like that, volleyball, a little bit. Volleyball is a, a little bit different. But ice hockey, I'll watch, you know, if it's a, if it's a good t two good teams, if it's Slovakia versus Russia, which is a preliminary matchup, I'll be all over that. I'm going ice hockey too as well. Not a lot of drama at the end here. You hit on it. It's a great tournament, great competition. A lot of the countries have a lot of good talent. USA, great men's and women's. As you mentioned, Canada, obviously great men's and women. Canada could probably field two teams and probably win two medals. Yeah. So that's how deep they are. So if the USA can get it done there, but as I mentioned earlier, Russia is up there, Sweden's up there, Slovakia is decent. There's some other good nations out there uh, in ice hockey. I think it's gonna be a good tournament, fun time. Bigger ice, more action. Yep, 200 feet by 100 feet, as opposed to, do you know what the North American size is? I think it's, mm, I have no 200 clue. by 85. All right, why don't we put these up together? Yeah. Because if I put mine up first, I'll steal everything that you want to yep. say, I'm sure. So 
We both had the same number one event, and it's short track speed skating. It's great. It's great. A lot of guys, action, tight turns, speed, quickness, as you mentioned, it's on a hockey rink, so it's kind of relatable. You can even pop out, maybe put on your, your if you want to reenact it and you don't have a hockey rink near you, pop on your skates, go around maybe your front uh, driveway, do something like that, who knows. I think it's going to be, it, it's can't miss stuff, and it's one of the great, it follows one of the great Olympic rules, short, burst, you can watch it, 45 minutes to an hour, and then you're good to go for the next thing, short track. It would be not maybe not in the top 10 in an all if it, if we were if you were ranking summer and winter Obviously together that was about to happen short track wouldn't be in the top 10 it would be pretty close to, might even in, sneak in the in summer Olympics? Yes. and if you, if you ranked all of them if you ranked every Olympic sport short tracks close to the top 10 maybe these, in it these two would be in my top 10 no yeah. doubt about it uh, actually there's some doubt about it because uh, I remember my 10th at the last Olympics was boxing and that would probably still be in there uh, short track, it's tough to get those quick bursts of sports like the summer games because yep. there's just way less events in the Winter Olympics. Uh, half the amount of sports, obviously. But I'm going short track also. Like you said, first qualifier for a number one event from in my book on the big board is the Americans have to be good. Yep. Whereas, you look at this, the Americans are competitive. They're not the best. Canada is pretty good. South Korea is good. China is a good squad. But the United States is right up there. They should be able to win medals in the, in the relays and such. Uh, the women's on the other. The men are better than the women. Yep. Keep an eye on J.R. Selsky, my second breakout athlete of these games. He's in every single event in short track. Um, and then it's just look, speed and crashes. What's better than that? I'm surprised more people don't get sliced in the face. Yeah. Like, if you go into one of those walls, if you hit that, that, that uh, wall first, that padding, and someone else, you took them with you, and they're skate up, they could cut your throat and have a little Richard Zegnick situation. We don't want that to happen. Yeah. But it's just, I wish I wish it was more short track. There's only like yeah. eight medal events in it, four on the girls' side, four on the guys. You need to incorporate some more short track because it's just it's just the bomb. Yeah. And you got to watch out because you got to get that inside. You know how they line yep. up? Yeah. Is it a random draw for who gets I'm not lined sure. up? I'm not I think sure. It's, it's either random or it's off time, but I think it could be random. And, uh, yeah, so hopefully we see some, some rivalries brewing. We, we got someone has to step up for Ono yeah. to battle these Koreans. Yeah. On the ice and in the media, you know, trash talk time. Well, that's it. After this, you should be ready for everything that the Sochi Games will bring to the table. It's great to get back here. Great to get back to the debate desk. Mm. Ready to take this jacket off. I don't think we'll ever do another PTR. No, so I you got to you got to enjoy this, this one. This enjoy is, the last thirty seconds here. This is the definitive. Shut the door on PTR. We got to thank Tom Lima. He's done yeah. solo work d back there. We got to thank him big time for all the things he's got. But uh, I think it's once again medal time. Did, did we Let's, get the medals? Yeah, we got them. Do we have the anthem? For a performance, no we anthem. don't. We don't no have anthem. the anthem. We won't sing it either, but no. um, we got the medals. So once again, we had a gold medal worthy performance on Part of the Rick Direction. You can just barely get that over my head. <laughs> we got that massive hat. Just on. barely got through. I almost couldn't get it with my hair, which. We got to throw out the hair for a little yeah. mention. It's it's back. I got the headband in for the first time. Fun fact for you, this is I've had my hair grown out longer for this episode of Olympic PTR than the last one. And the last one, my hair was clearly cooler looking, less blonde. It's more blonde now. It's straight, which is way boring. Way more boring. You got anything to say? Only thing I got left is tip your waiters. <laughs>